Question four. It says, Kia Tumete is a South African student who is on holiday in Australia. He went to the Lawrence Theatre to attend a musical concert. Annex D, as soon as you see that, you go find Annex D, right? So it looks like this sort of layout of a theatre. Make sure you have it so that you know what you're working with. Shows the seating arrangement of the Lawrence Theatre. Okay, then it says Table 5 shows the single ticket prices for a visit to the theatre in Australian dollars, inclusive of VAT, right? So there's probably going to be a question around VAT. They don't generally indicate VAT unless they want you to use it later on. So just like take note of that. Just like do a little underline there. Okay. So the costs seem to differ on Friday and Saturday to the cost on Thursday and Sunday, which makes sense because these are more um, popular evenings, right? So it's more expensive per different um, category um, on those two days than Thursday and Sunday. Be careful here. What is Kietumetse? He is a student. So when they're asking about him, we should thinking about students, right? Don't think about adult. That's a common mistake that students make is they're like, oh, okay, it's just an adult. But they've given you different categories here. So it says use the annexure and answer the questions that follow. It says determine, as a percentage, the probability of randomly selecting an odd number. What's an odd number? It's something that cannot be divided by two, right, for a disabled person from all the seats in the theater. Okay. Well, when I say cannot be divided by two, I'm saying cannot be divided by two, get a whole number with no remainder. Okay. Right. So let's look here. The disabled chairs are indicated here on the map, right, by the dark colored chairs. So we see that there's one, two, three, four of those, and only two of them, right, are odd numbers. Now we have to then calculate what is the total number of seats in this whole place. So we have to go count them. Now don't go count them individually, just count the number of seats in each row and add them together. So let's start in section A and do this together. So section A, we have 80 in row G, we have 13 in row F, we have 12 in the next one, 11, 9, 8, 6. Okay, let's move to section B. Right, we have 27 at the top there. Make sure that you type this in correctly. 24, 22, 19, 17, 14, 11. Let's move to section C. We have up at the top, we have 18. Be careful that you're reading that correctly. We have 18 plus 13, plus 12, plus 11, plus 9, plus 8, plus 6. So you should be able to see that section A and C, they mirror each other with a number of seats, and then section B has more seats. In total, we have 288 seats. So the probability is 2 over the total number of seats, which is 288, right? And they said, how did they want us to display it? As a percentage. So we're going to have to times by 100. Make sure that you're starting on a new page, Right, and let's do this together. So it's 2 over 288 times 100 to get into a percentage. You get a mark for a 2, a mark for the 288, and then a mark for your answer. 2 over 288 times by 100, and your answer there is 0.69%. Right, generally you round it off to two decimal places as a, as a sort of just a general point there, right? And that would be your answer. Probability, common question. Right, let's move on to the next one. 4.1.2 says identify the row and seat number for a person who is seated as follows. In section B, fourth row from the stage in the middle seat. Okay, let's do this together. Section B, fourth row from the stage, so that's from the front. So if we hear one, two, three, four, so we're in this D row here, and it says the middle seat. So there's 19 seats right in row d and we know the middle of 19 is nine and a half if you like moggy i don't know that go put it in your calculator divided by two nine and a half we always round up so the middle seat there is going to be 10. so what are we going to write for our answer d10 okay so it's effectively just asking you to navigate around here um what another thing as i write this down another thing i want you to note right is that in these questions and in this annexure, you'll see that there's no north, south, east, west. It's a different type of floor plan, right? That's not what you're talking about here. Here we're talking about a floor plan that doesn't necessarily have to do with navigation around it. It has to do with looking at this and saying, okay, where are the seats? Let's look at that. So it's still navigation, but not in the sense of traveling long distances. It's just being able to move around a space. It's like a blueprint. So just be careful around that. Don't be looking for north, south, east, west on these sort of questions. Okay. 
Let's look at the next question, 4.1.3. It says, Kietsumetse is seated in D7 of section A. He has to assist his friend in A11 after the show. Describe the shortest possible pathway he would follow to reach A11. Okay, so let's just see here. Okay, so he is in D7 in section A. So he is over here. I'm just going to highlight it. So he's in D7 and he needs to get to his friend in A11. So he has A, but it only goes to 6. He has A, it only goes to 6. A11 is over here. He's going to assist his friend because there's a friend is sitting in the um, handicapped or disabled chair. So it's it's quite likely that his friend needs some form of assistance to, to um, be mobile around the theatre. So I'm just going to draw like a general path. He's going to go here. He's going to go down. He's going to go along the stage and he's going to go to his friend there. Okay, so let's talk this through. I would say he should get up. Right, if he gets up and faces the stage, he should turn left. Right, as he gets to the end of the row, he should turn right. Okay, and then he should walk along the stage. Right, walk along the stage towards A11, which is in section B, and then he can help his friend. Okay, so importantly, you have to say along the row, he, he goes um, left. Right, along the row, he turns right down the corridor. When he gets to the stage, he's going to then, because he's facing the stage over there, he's going to then turn left, walk along the stage and get to his friend. I'm not going to write that all out just because it's going to take quite a bit, but you have to say each of those, right? And you have to talk about his friend being the last seat in that row and that's your four marks there. I'm not going to write it down just because it's going to take a while. Okay, let's move on then to the next question. Okay, so 4.1.3 I've done with you. I'm going to do 4.1.4 with you. Importantly for 4.1.3, you don't say north, south, east, west, right? You're just talking about left and right, etc. Okay, so make sure that if you were standing and you were telling your friend where you went, that your friend would know exactly where you went. Okay, let's look at the second last question for this question. It says, sections A to C had the following number of people attending on Thursday. Okay, so it has adults, students, children. Then it says, there was a claim that an amount of exactly this much, excluding VAT, so we're going to have to strip VAT out, was collected on that day. Verify with calculations whether this claim is correct. Okay, so firstly what we're going to do is we're going to add up the number of adults, students and children because they all pay the same amount on this day. Which, what is this day? It is Thursday. So we know that we're going to be looking at these fees here, not those fees. That's important. So if we add all of these up, okay, I want you to write adults, I want you to write students, and I want you to write children. Okay, so adults are 53 plus 57 plus 40. So we have 150. Students, we have 15 plus 32 plus 10, and that is 57. And then we have children, which is 9 plus 15 plus 9. So it is 33. Okay. Now let's go see what each of them pays on a Thursday. So I'm going to times this by 28.6. Times this by 26.4. Times this by 17.6. Okay. So it's my number of people times by the charge that each of them had to pay to enter the theatre. Okay, so go and do each of those calculations. A big part of this, right, is making sure that you are typing this incorrectly. I know I speak about that all the time, but the reason I speak about it all the time is because people so often make these mistakes and it's such a silly way of, well, silly, I mean careless way of losing marks because it's literally so easy to write, okay, and type in. Okay, I'm going to just put the Aussie dollar um, so oh, the Aussie dollar actually is looking like this. Okay, so put your currency in. And now let's add all of those up because we want the total. So put that there, add it all up, right? And um, I'm hoping that I've done all of these correctly. We'll check now. Okay, total Aussie dollars that were, ca that were collected that night was this, okay? But this here includes that, okay? And the question said that it was this amount, right, the 5,796, excluding that. So let's go and strip that out. Now, in a number of my videos, I've gone through this process, but I'm going to go through it again. When I am adding that, I times by one point whatever the VAT amount is, right? In South Africa, it's 15%, so this is when I'm adding that, 
right? When I strip out that, right, strip out that, I divide by 1.115, okay? That's in the general South African context. But here, this is Australian, and Australian VAT is 10%. So we're not going to use 15% like South Africa. We're going to use 10% like Australia, okay? So we're going to take this amount, and we're going to say 6375.60, and we're going to divide it by that 10%, okay? Because it says without the VAT, and it is exactly... 5796, right? And that is the amount that was stated there, right? So you have to put your conclusion. You therefore say, therefore, statement is correct. Okay, that conclusion is so important. So many students forget it, but please make sure you put that conclusion in. Okay, there's one more question for this um, sub question before we get on to our last video. So let's just look at it over the page. So it says, Kiyotometse bought a ticket for a Friday show. Okay, calculate how much the ticket costs in South African Rand. Use the exchange rates below. So they've given us Australian to US and then US to South African. So we're going to have to go sort of like quite a long sort of merry dance from US dollars to American dollars, then to South African dollars. So we're just going to do it in a stepwise fashion. Let's firstly go see how much it was in Australian do dollars on a Friday. Kiyotometse is a student so it would have cost him 30 comma 50 right 30 comma 50 australian dollars so that's odds okay because he's a student and it was on friday so now what we're going to do is we're going to go do and all we're going to go do all our calculations so not a problem let us go and do these things right so what we're going to say here is we're going to say okay australian dollar to the to us dollar Right, each dollar is 0 0.71 of the United States dollar. So I'm going to times this by 0 0.71, and that's going to give me what it is in in United States dollars. Okay. So in United States dollars, it is 21.655. I'm still going to put the dollar sign and just put a US next to it. Now each US dollar is 14.43 South African rands. So I'm going to times this, right, by 14.43, and that is going to give my, my answer in South African rand. So in South African rand, it is that. Okay, oh, sorry, let me just move that up so that you see. Okay, so the reason we, we do that is we're just converting it through. It makes sense, right? A theater ticket is sort of generally in that ballpark, right? Round off to two decimal places because all currencies are always two decimal places. You have to know that. Okay, we have one more video left and then we're done with this paper. Quite a tricky paper, but we're getting there nicely. Okay, see you in the next one.